Okay, so the boat has officially been handed over across to us. This is our first day on the boat exclusively as a couple. Um, it is slightly chaotic. It is <laughs> a bit of a mess at the moment as we just try to move in and get ourselves organized. But one of the biggest jobs for us right now is getting our solar fitted. So at the moment we have our two davits off the back and we're gonna go and fit our own custom solar panel onto the back of it. Um, so that's what we're gonna go and do next. As you might have seen in one of our previous videos, local solar firms would try to charge us 20,000 euros. So we decided to do it ourselves. We enlisted some help to design and manufacture a custom solar arch, designed in a way that we could piece it together ourselves. These are the brackets that have been designed on CAD specifically for our boat. Um, there's three different sections. Two of them will be fitted onto this part of the davit and we're gonna stick a third just under here for the final part. Okay, so our first job is to get these davit extensions off. So what we're gonna do is gonna remove these four bolts that are holding them in. Nice and easy. The davit extension was removed without dropping the bolts into the water. And then we did exactly the same on the starboard side. Ta-da! Taking the rope out of the split lock, which will allow us to be able to unscrew the split lock to get it off so that we can fit one of our brackets underneath here and re-secure it on afterwards. This was simply held on with two bolts inside the jammer, keeping it secure to the davit. And then we did exactly the same on the other side. I was on standby with a cardboard box to catch all the bits we kept dropping in the water. Okay, so now we've got the clutch off. Uh, we've got these big V brackets and the clutch will sit perfectly in the middle and this will secure back the top of the davits. And we're gonna do this both on port and starboard. And just like that, the jammers are secured back onto the davits with the V brackets secured underneath. Okay, so now the next section is to mount the two front supporting strut braces to the front of the davits. So we've got two pieces of fabricated metal here. They're gonna to go together and we're gonna mount them on there like that. And that should be in line with the rear uh, strut brace as well. We then secured the two braces between the main davits and the davit extensions. This method integrates our custom made solar frame seamlessly into the davit structure meaning there's no need to drill any new holes. And that's it, the base structure has been completed. Okay, so we now have our mounting brackets in place across the davits. So the next step is to add these struts across. So we're gonna add two struts perpendic perpendicular to the boat on each davit, and then we have long, long lengths of struts um, coming horizontally as well. And that's gonna be the main mounting frame for the, for the solar panels. This part is really important to measure and fit correctly so that the rest of the frame and solar panels sit in the right place. Everything was designed to the millimetre so that once the frame is assembled, the mounting holes on the solar panels will line up perfectly for fitting. It was a slow and meticulous process, but worth taking the time over this. We bolted the starboard side in place and then replicated the same process on port. So next up is the main strut that goes directly across the two davits. Um, so we've got the two struts, horizontal, perpendicular to the davits at the moment. And then we need to do the big, long, horizontal one back across the back of the catamaran now. And this strut was massive, measuring 3.6 meters. We had to gently lift it into place and rest it on the V bracket without dropping it into the water and losing it forever. We're attaching the final bracket onto the davit extension. So we're going to use this little U-bolt, which is actually perfectly uh, designed and measured. Uh, and then that's going to attach this final bracket onto the end so that we can attach the final long strut to the end of the frame. <laughs> It's really starting to come together now. We then added the final long struts to complete the base frame. And here's the complete frame, ready for the solar panels to be mounted. Pretty cool, huh? And now for the exciting part, the solar panels. And these solar panels are huge, measuring over 1.7 meters long. These bifacial panels 
are capable of kicking out over 500 watts per hour and we have three to install. Each panel weighed over 22 kilograms and we had to line them up perfectly with the frame whilst negotiating a bit of water in between the boat and the pontoon. Once secured in the right place, each panel was bolted to the frame. Turns out, securing the panels needed a bit more balance than we first thought. No, it's not the camera, right? <laughs> oh, 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 careful, you right? Yeah, we're good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's not the first. That's not. <laughs> <laughs> Once we were 100% happy, every part of the frame was exactly in the right place, we went round and firmly tightened every nut. And we are done. What started as a very expensive problem turned into some creative design work and finished up as a custom made frame for our solar panels, which was actually pretty easy to install at a fraction of the cost. We may be biased, but how good does she look on the back of Runa? Our first night on Runa yesterday was totally chaotic. Um, not only were we moving in, um, we also spent a large portion of the day building the solar panels. Um, so you can see the, uh, the solar arch that we made and we mounted the panels on top. Um, and that we thought it was going to take about four or five hours, it ended up taking all day. Um, we started about 11 um, and didn't finish till about 9, 10 p.m. at night. But they're on, they're done, they look great, and the frame is absolutely rock solid. Um, so we're really happy with that. Next stage is getting it all wired. So we're doing major upgrades in terms of the electronics and the, the batteries, the inverters, chargers, anything on the boat. We're pretty much replacing it um, and switching it out for, for Victron um, instead so we can get these solar power panels powering the boat. Um, we have um, Kieran from Vision Marine coming to join us in a couple of hours. Um, Vision Marine, uh, our company in, in the UK that designed our whole battery system for us, that would work with the solar. Kieran's flown all the way out um, and met us in La Sabla to help us with the installation. Um, so let's get started. We're expecting him in the next couple of hours. Um, we're trying to prep the boat for him, um, but I think today's gonna be another busy one. So let's get started. We were installing everything from additional batteries and charge controllers to an inverter and battery shunt. So this weekend we're joined by Kieran from Vision Marine. Hi there. Um, who has saved us um, from a very stressful few days um, and agreed to come out and help us fit our solar power system. Yeah, so Ruth came into the shop uh, a couple of weeks ago with a pretty basic design. I looked at it, looked how we can improve it and put it together. And we came up with a, bit of a, came up with a plan um and they're on a bit of a time crunch so they've asked me to come out i don't usually do it but i've done installs on boats before so now we've just got to take the boat apart a bit and see how it's put together the majority of the boat's electric setup is in the owner's cabin the first thing we did was remove one of the factory fitted chargers that the inverter was going to replace a few simple screws and it's out we started working on the batteries to integrate them into the existing bank which we're installing in parallel to keep everything on 12 volts. Threads are done, positive stuff. Now for the negatives. Next up, Kieran started to tackle the inverter. We found a well ventilated, empty space close to the batteries in the owner's cabin. Kieran measured up, started to secure the mounting brackets. And now we're ready for the inverter to be fixed in. And whoa, the inverter was heavy. Kira and I struggled to negotiate the gap and it was a three man job just to get it secured onto the mountain brackets. And there you go, it's in. The next stage was the bus bar, which we fit in this tiny little hole, along with master switches for the inverter and the batteries. We adapted a Victron Lynx power in distributor by adding mega fuses so that we didn't need separate positive and negative bus bars to keep it as neat as possible. <laughs> Absolute chaos.
the batteries are now installed um we have got our solar panels on the back installed we've got our inverter installed so all that's left now is charge controller time which we are putting fixing into a, an aluminium plate which will help to disperse some of the heat when this thing gets hot step one is the aluminium plate which the charge controller will sit on top Good morning everybody. We are on day two of waking up on the boat um, and it feels fantastic. It also feel, feels very messy. We're still on a work site because um, we're on day three of fitting the solar. So day one, we successfully installed the frame onto the davits and got the solar panels installed. And then day two was a bit of a tricky day. We ran into quite a few problems that we didn't expect as you always do on boats, but we have installed the um, charge controller, um, which has been stored into the engine room, the inverter and the batteries are in place. Um, so all we need to do is get everything cabled up today. And then we're also going to um, install a servo um, to help with all the monitoring and install a, galvanic, uh, sorry, a galvanic isolator, um, which will help us to um, protect us against potentially dodgy AC currents. Okay, so this is the part that Ruth and I are dreading we have to drill a hole in the back of our hull. Um, so what we need to do is feed the solar panel wiring down the davit, then into the hull. And that's where we need to screw, or to drill our hole and fit a gland. And then the wiring will fit through down to the batteries. Now, we're too scared to do it. So Kieran is gonna come in and safely. take on the responsibility. It's fine, we're doing it safely. We're drilling pilot holes and making sure everything's starting small and working bigger, so we'll be fine. First up, we had to make holes in the rubber seal. Just large enough for the solar cables to fit through, but no more. It's important that this is super tight to make sure that we don't get any water leakage. There we go. First cable in. Awesome. This is Andrew's job for the weekend. <laughs> So I'm trusted to do. <laughs> I'm not trusted to do anything else. Apart from just sit and catch things when we fall into the water. Good for that. Don't drop the gland. Or the drill. Or the drill. You happy with that? Take that back off and... Yeah, I reckon. You happy, Ru? Yeah. successfully drilled into back Runa and without dropping the drill into the water. Thanks for taking one for the team, Kieran. We needed to get the solar cable through the hull and into the engine bay in order to connect to the charge controller. Kieran and I fed the cable through the gland and navigated the empty cavities until we found a way through. Once connected, I went round and tidied up all the cables to keep it neat and tidy and prepped for a potentially rough sail into the Bay of Biscay. And we are making progress. The solar is now connected to the charge controller in the engine bay. The last step is to find a way through that bulkhead so we can connect it all up to the rest of the system in the owner's cabin. And voila, here comes the cable. We started a production line to get the rest of the components cabled together. Kieran measured up whilst we cut, lugged and crimped each cable ready to be connected. The production line sped things up, but there are a lot of cables. So some singing and dancing kept me entertained. Okay, day four of fitting batteries and solar panels. Uh, we're almost there. We have AC in working and um, we're powering the boat. The only thing that isn't working is our AC out from the inverter. So hopefully we should connect up this cable um, for our AC out and then that should then power our whole AC on the boat and then we're pretty much done. So let's give this a shot. And this is the final piece of the puzzle. Connecting this 
should complete the system and give us solar power. AC out, cable is now in. We're gonna switch on the breakers um, to complete the system. and Hopefully we get this inverter turning on. So. Yeah, that's it, inverter on. Okay, let's see, big test. Will it turn on? Yeah! We have power. We started our journey with a 20,000 euro problem, and I was encouraged by so many people around us to take on this challenge ourselves, and I am so glad that we did. One of the biggest things I've learned is that you need to get your basic knowledge up to a certain level, but you don't need to be an expert. You can take what you think you need for your boat requirements, take that to an expert, and then get the extra help to get it over the line to become a professionally designed system. One of the best things I did was walk into Vision Marine's store one day, um, they, from start to finish, have been incredible in terms of customer service. Their products have been fairly priced, but the extra level of service that we've got to help us educate us, to help us understand how the system works, to help us understand how to install it. They went through calls in terms of going through step by step of what we need to do to install this onto our boat. Now, due to the time constraints that we had, we actually got some extra help to install it for us. Um, but if we had more time, we would have been able to do that ourselves, albeit quite a bit slower. Um, we were also quite fortunate that we had a brother um, who can design and create a frame for us, but we now have a frame that anyone can fit onto an XS11 um, onto the, the davits. So I think we're incredibly happy that we took this on ourselves. We've learned so much along the way. We can now fix the problem. Um, theoretically, because um, we understand how it's all built and we can test for problems if anything arises. Um, and all that we had to do after it was fitted was take it out for a test sale. So we went out for a day and stress tested the frame um, under some um, waves just to make sure it was ready and capable for hitting the Bay of Biscay. And it passed every single test with flying colours. It was steady as a rock um, and ready for the sale.